paces. Miss Myjoy picked up a scarred brown leather bag and slung its strap over her shoulder. She probed the table until she found a particular fabric-covered satchel. When we get there, fill this here bag with enough changes of clothes to get you where you're going. There's a little pocket on the side. It's got money for a bus ticket and a slip of paper with my cousin Marva's phone number written on it. Call her when you arrive at your destination and tell her you're safe. She'll let me know you're okay. Thank you, Miss Myjoy. We'd better get a move on if we want to keep him amongst the living, Miss Myjoy said. The healer woman and the young girl entered the night and headed to the house Roberta had inhabited for the past eight years. You got any money saved to add to what's in the bag, Miss Myjoy asked. Some. I still got a little of the money my mother left me in her will, and I got my graduation present from Aunt Lizzie. Miss Myjoy nodded her approval. Where'd you cut the nasty old fool, she asked. First in his gut, then clear through his hand. When I ran to get you, he was bleeding real bad. Probably bleeding like the pig he's always been, the healer woman said. Miss Myjoy and Roberta matched each other's pace. They walked in silence until Roberta spoke. Are the police going to come get me, she asked. No, the police ain't going to know nothing about this, Miss Myjoy answered. What's he going to say, that he tried to rape you and you fought back? He'd lie and say I wanted it to happen. Miss Myjoy linked her arm through Roberta's. If he does, he'll be facing me on the witness stand. I'll tell the jury how I seen him try to force himself on you several times. The two women sloshed through the puddles hidden under the tall grass that surrounded the rear of Roberta's aunt and uncle's house. Roberta paused outside the back door and dutifully scraped the thick mud from her shoes onto an old mat. Miss Myjoy ignored her opportunity to clean the sludge from hers. She stepped over the mat, entered the kitchen, and forced her vision to accustom itself to the room's semi-darkness. Roberta, go do as I told you. Roberta's form faded from sight. Miss Myjoy scrutinized the room. She heard a low groan ooze from the pantry and slither along the floor until it reached the spot where she stood. She gripped her leather bag and forged her way past the old stove and the lower cabinets with their abstract pattern of missing paint chips. The odor of whiskey and lard drifted past her nostrils as she peered into the kitchen's antechamber. Look what we have here, she said softly. That, that heifer tried her best to butcher me, Miss Henderson, the grizzled man sputtered. No, she didn't, Leroy. She's real capable. If she'd done her best, she would have castrated you for sure, Miss Myjoy answered. Can, can you help me? I can, or I can let you bleed to death right here on the floor. Confusion clouded Leroy's face. I could let the blood drain out of you and then put the knife in your hand and make it look like you accidentally cut yourself. I'd claim your niece came to me for help, but it was too late. Leroy cast his gaze downward and caught sight of the thick red trail eking rhythmically from his belly down to the floor. Then, in supplication, he looked up at Miss Myjoy and spoke, his voice hollow and distant. I ain't going to turn that girl in, he said. I didn't expect you would. Miss Myjoy opened her bag and extracted alcohol, packing, and her stitching kit. She knelt on her knees and tugged at the sides of Leroy's pants. Spurts of blood punctuated each of her rough movements. This isn't how you picture taking your trousers off for a woman, is it, Leroy? A pain-wracked, uh, was his only answer. How many times did you think you could have your way with that girl before she fought back? Leroy's expressionless, opaque eyes stared back at her. In resignation, he let his head turn to one side a second before he acquiesced to silence. Miss Myjoy bent closer. With her ear near Leroy's open mouth, she whispered, You still breathe, an old man? Leroy's eyes remained open, but he didn't answer her. Miss Myjoy extended her fingers and made her palm as flat as a board. She pressed Leroy's chest in the spot where she figured his heart would be if indeed he really had one. She ordered her hand to feel the thump of life from deep within his body. She felt nothing. She gazed at the red pool on the floor. It was still. The blood no longer flowed. 
Leroy's inanimate expression told her all she needed to know. 